What's up, Lore Hounds? It's Cooper here with Travis Baldry, the president and game director of Torchlight 2 from Runic Games. Uh, we actually just found out the price point, which is a fantastic 20 bucks or 19.99 if you want to fret. <laughs> Um, and then there was also something else you guys announced this week. Uh, we announced the fourth class in the game, the Ember Mage, which is kind of a fire, ice, electrical uh, spellcaster. And uh, Yeah, which is being played right there, actually. Oh, convenient, isn't it? And uh, again, we see we got a little wolf there, I think it is. So the pets are back. Yep, pets are back. Fishing's back. Um, and uh, we'll probably add a few more pets to the game. And uh, four classes over the three in Torchlight 1. And the Torchlight 1 classes are gone, right? The Torchlight 1 classes are gone as playables. They come back as NPCs. We really wanted people to have new stuff to do. One of my favorite things was the pets, because I'm a pet person in every game I play. <laughs> um, so uh, you mentioned that there's going to be more. Is it going to be class-specific pets or stuff we earn as rewards? Like, how are we getting more pets? Uh, we haven't done any, uh, any, we haven't made any decisions about doing class specifics. We've tossed it around. Um, mostly we just want to have a few more varieties that you can pick at the start. Right now we've got a ferret, a dog, and a cat. We'll probably add a couple of more. Um, and you can still turn your pets into other beasts by fishing and then feeding them stuff. Um, so, and you're still able to teach your pet spells so they can wander around summoning zombies. Yeah, we touched just about everything in the game. Um, I mean, the biggest changes are obviously that we've gone to a, like an act-based structure where you go through outdoor regions, it's time of day, there's weather. Um, then we put a lot more focus on story this time out. We actually have cinematics. Um, and more of a story to tell. We hired a writer. It's a, it's a miracle. Um, and uh, obviously the addition of multiplayer is kind of the biggest thing. Yeah, and then, you know, some of the small fine-tuned things are like, uh, we just went over, when you look at all the items on the screen, they don't turn into like a giant bumble. Yeah, and it's just small little things like that, really fine-tuning the game. And then, of course, we do have these big things, so let's jump into the biggest, and probably the most requested was multiplayer. Yeah. Um, how many people can you hold? Uh, currently, I think we have it set between like four and six max in, in, a, in a game. We may extend that or allow you to adjust it up. That seems to be kind of about the sweet spot where you've still got stuff to kill. Right, is that <laughs> not fighting over people? Yeah, and so we have uh, we have land support as well as kind of our peer-to-peer uh, -peer match made multiplayer, um, as well as uh, your standard offline game. And you're not restricted to like one of each class in the game or anything. You can kind of just go all nuts, all mages or something. Yeah, exactly. How does it work when someone, because it's drop in, drop out, how does it work when someone comes in? Does it, it just instantly get dip, more difficult? Do we have to like go find them? Uh, basically, the, the difficulty scales dynamically based on your proximity. So uh, if more players are nearby to you, then it's going to be more difficult. But as they get further and further away, it'll become less so. And that's kind of tied into how XP and loot are shared. If somebody else kills something and is near you, they're going to drop loot for you. Um, but if they're on the other side of the map, they won't. So they'll drop loot for you that you'll see on the screen, but you still got to run over and get it. Exactly. Everybody gets their own loot rolls, um, uh, so you don't have to fight over stuff. Uh, if you drop things back into the world, they then become public, but it just makes things a little bit smoother. Yeah, and you won't get insta-gibbed if three people join at the same time and you're fighting a not-so-easy exactly. guy. Exactly. So one of the other big, huge things of Torchlight 1 was modding. Uh, what, what have you guys done to kind of build that up? Uh, our modding tools have kind of advanced a lot since Torchlight 1. Uh, we've added the ability to do UI modding, and we've added a lot of extra features for what we added to Torchlight 2. And we'll be releasing those tools again, probably shortly after launch. Um, and we're really excited to see what people will do with them. Obviously, it's kind of a whole different deal when you can mod with multiplayer. Yeah. Not only is it more kind of complicated for us to manage, but it does, I mean, there's an opportunity to do some really neat stuff there. Uh, being able to multiplayer class mods is going to be pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty insane what the modding community can do with different games and when they get those tools. And if they're good tools, they just go um, nuts. So there is an ability to turn on friendly fire in player kills, right? And yeah, we do have PvP in the game. We don't know if we'll put much focus on that, uh, especially when you take into account the fact that it's super moddable. It's never really going to be a competitive game, but it is an option that's available in the mod tools that we may or may not turn on in the game. So you think that may be something the mod community will run with? I'm absolutely sure that someone will play with it. And the, one of the last things that you added that we talked about a little before is cinematics and story. So what? There wasn't much of a story in Torchlight 1. That was kind of a hang-up people had. Um, so if you're just starting in Torchlight 2, I don't think you're missing a whole lot. Story-wise, you know, it's the brutal truth, I guess. But Probably not. Yeah, so, so what do we have going on in Torchlight 2? What is the story that we're starting with? 
Well, you know, I don't want to tell you the whole story, but uh, come on. It actually does extend from the original, albeit smaller, story in Torchlight 1, uh, and kind of kicks off from the end there. Um, we had uh, Clay do some cinematics for us, so we'll actually have kind of some visual telling of that story. Um, ah, I'm not going to give the story away. Not, not even the beginning? Why we're there? We went to all that effort. Uh, well, uh, uh, somebody will kick me. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay. Stonewalled on the story. I think that's a first. All right, so we still don't know when it's coming out exactly, but it's going to be before this year. Can we hold you to that? Yeah, you can, because i got to book a trip to Hawaii for a really late uh, anniversary trip with my wife. So, <laughs> so she'll hold you to that. Yeah, she'll hold it. way more important than a gamer. Possibly with a gun. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks so much. It looks awesome. I can't wait to get it. And especially play with the pets. That's probably kind of weird, but I love pets. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot.